Call this meeting to order. Please stand for the Pledge of Allegiance. I pledge allegiance to the flag of the United States of America, and to the republic for which it stands, one nation, under God, indivisible, with liberty and justice for all. Please remain standing for a moment of silent prayer for our servicemen and women and for all of those who have passed away in our community. Roll call, please. Mr. Perry. Mr. Donahue. Here. Mr. Evans. Here. Mr. Gone. Here. Mr. Rogan. Here. Do we have any motions prior to the meeting? Mr. Evans? I think I might get my glasses out. I would like to make a motion to take from the table resolution number 127, 2019. Is there a second? Second. On the question, this piece of legislation is taken from the table and placed in seventh order for a final vote. This resolution concerns the settlement agreement between the city and UGI utilities to settle litigation filled against the city and the PUC. Anyone who wishes to speak on this particular piece of legislation may do so in fourth order citizens' participation. All those in favor, signify by saying aye. 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 Opposed? No. The ayes have it and so moved. Please dispense with the reading of the minutes. Third order, 3A minutes of the regular meeting of Scranton Redevelopment Authority held June 11, 2019. Are there any comments? If not, received and filed. Do any council members have announcements at this time? I have one. Um, as decided yesterday during our caucus, city council will appoint a mayor by the end of this month. We unanimously agreed to an appointment process that involves collecting letter of interest and resumes from potential appointees and conducting public interviews. Letters of interest and resumes were, will be received in the clerk's office until next Wednesday, July 12th at noon. Please contact the city clerk if you have any questions. I would also like to note again that interested parties should not contact or communicate with council members directly ahead of this decision. July 17th, not 12th. July 17th, sorry about that. Anyone else? Fourth order, citizens' participation. Joan Hodewanitz. Joan Hodewanitz, city resident and taxpayer. Um, what was the executive session for? A uh, piece of potential litigation, okay. unrelated to um, the appointment. Okay. Um, when you receive these letters of interest and you start reviewing applicants, um, I would strongly recommend that, among other things, you vet them, check to make sure they've paid all their taxes and fees at all levels of government. You should probably do a criminal background check, sad to say, but you should probably do one. And also you should look for evidence in terms of their education or work experience to show that they have some level of financial literacy and knowledge of government operations. Those are some of the key uh, items I would be looking for if I were sitting in your seats. Um, with regard to LIPS, hey, I, Mr. Rogan, since you're now acting mayor, I would strongly recommend that you have a come to Jesus meeting with the auditors and send them forth to the LIPS department. Even if it means that the completion date of the audit is gonna slip, they need to go in there with a couple magnifying glasses, okay? Uh, you need to see what's going on in that department and if at all possible, they should come back to city council and you as acting mayor with the recommended internal controls to make sure that department is run with, with the least amount of risk of fraud or other errors. Because clearly from what the attorney Fried said in the FBI press conference, something is not right up in that department. I'm not accusing anyone, but I think I would recommend you do that as acting mayor. Um, with regard to firefighter Kyle Armbruster, can anyone tell me, I know he's a city employee, is he on paid administrative leave 
unpaid administrative leave. Last time I heard he was in the pokey. If you talk about that in fifth word, if you would. With regard to the Home Rule Charter, don't let this slip. That document is badly in need of revision, okay? Um, there are deadlines in that document that are always ignored. Uh, you've obviously got contradiction with the administrative code. And among other things, in relooking the work that Mr. Bolzoni has done, I am now of the opinion that the residency requirement needs to be relooked. As far as I'm concerned, you need to go for talent. And the only person who should be required to be a Scranton resident is the mayor. And I think I agree with you, Wayne. Mr. Bolzoni basically has carried the water for the city. If it weren't for him, I don't know what would have happened. He's the reason we're moving out of distress status. So, you know, I mean, he's taken a lot of criticism for me also. But I look at what he's done for the city, and I think, you know, that we should thank him and hold on to him through this period of crisis. I think that uh, you also need to relook hiring practices in, in HR. I think uh, looking back at the last five years, there have been some questionable activities. Uh, now, do we know uh, if there's been any impact on the city's bond rating? I can't believe that, that Standard & Poor's and the other uh, credit rating agencies are gonna ignore this. Um, I think you need to be sensitive to that and keep on top, and if there's a change, let the people know. Okay, uh, I think to, it's to very date, important. Yeah, there has not been a change to date. Uh, it's, it's, a recent development now this could happen in the next couple of weeks mm -hmm. especially as you're getting ready for another budget and you're gonna have to get a tan mm -hmm. so you need to be sensitive to that and finally could you update us in fifth uh, order about what you're gonna do about the City Hall renovations since obviously no one's gonna be buying this building you know you're on the cusp of having to produce a budget for 2020 and I know that we're, we're in a transition mode, but a lot of scrutiny's gotta be given to preparing for that budget, okay? That's why I'm, I'm happy that we still have Mr. Bolzoni here to steer that course. So let's not treat the six month mayor just as a placeholder. We need to work on a lot of issues above and beyond the loss of the mayor. Thank you. Thank you. Lee Morgan. Good evening, Council. Lee Morgan. Um, you know, it, it's just, it's, it's come to pass now that we have to really reconsider what's happened with the parking garages and the sale of the Scranton Sewer Authority because I don't know what the scope of the FBI investigation is, but with the amount of attorney fees and um, the Scranton Sewer Authority selling down, spending down its reserve, I question if those sales were ever legitimate. And um, even in, as far as the alleged plan to shed the city hall, I mean, we had a chief executive officer that was taking kickbacks from every direction. And the sad part is that council had a investigative responsibility in the home rule charter section 312, I think. And you know, it goes back to what I've said before about this council. You all look good in pretty little suits, but there's been no real drive by the council to, to change this city. Not just this council, but many councils. And the residents, they hold a very large responsibility for voting Democrat and Republican people into office who had no vision for turning this city around. And Mr. Gawhan, like I said to you once and I, and I don't, you know, no disrespect to you, but you were an opposition person, and I asked you once from this podium, what were you actually opposed to? And, and, and this just doesn't go to Mr. Gahan. This goes to all five council members. Um, you know, Mr. Evans, you as the lone Republican, I mean, should have shown the difference in your philosophy, political philosophy, and it was all the same thing. Nothing. And the residents, 
They've received nothing, just more debt, more problems. I don't agree that the city's on, on, the, on the edge of a rebirth. I think the city shifted its burdens and did games with mirrors, but the truth of the matter is this city's beyond distressed. And when you go through the neighborhoods, you know, as a council, I think this council needed to come forward and, you know, people talk about the problems with the, with the, with the charter. It's not a problem with the charter. It's a lack of ability by the council members to take themselves down to the Lackawanna County Courthouse and file something, okay, and get these laws upheld and get a judge to look at what's taking place here and get a judge to issue an order and start doing something. Just don't talk at a council meeting or take questions and never give an answer because that's not legitimate government. That's not what you were elected for. You were elected to be leaders. And I think that this city for too long has been leaderless all the way around. People have been chasing money and kickbacks. That's my opinion. I feel that that's been going on almost forever in my city. And I've watched my city die for almost my entire life. And I blame the residents of this city more than anybody else because they've lacked the ability to separate fact from fiction. And anybody who was born and raised in the city, I was born in 59, who can't see that this city has been in a steep decline, look at you need to get medicated. And the city employees, I feel sorry for them the most because their pensions aren't even funded. Okay, but they want to call the shots on who's going to run this city. And the truth of the matter is, they've chosen the wrong people for a long time. And if the Democratic and Republican Party are going to march out their next alleged leader, good luck. Because they haven't done a very stellar job for my entire lifetime and even beyond my lifetime. I mean, you have to ask yourself, why would a former mayor be a consultant for the man in the mall? That's what the newspaper reported, okay? And how do you get a parking garage for free? And how does a council run that through? Where were all the questions and where were the protections for the residents? And when were the, the city council members gonna say to their state representative and their state senator, it's time to find a new way to create tax money instead of taxing people's properties. Because when you look at the blight in this city, it's driven by the city's need for money and the school district. And you know what, if we're gonna say something about the school district, which I'd like to do, when were the school directors ever gonna stand up and ask for uniform school funding across the Commonwealth and petition the court for action? because our legislature seems unable to do the job. Thank you. Thank, Thank you. you. Bob Bolas. Afternoon, Council. Bob Bolas ran. It was nice, uh, and I'll put this on the table today, that Bill and I actually had a uh, sensible discussion about city business and how we all need to work together and uh, both he and I agreed that uh, the battle between us should come to an end and we should focus on what's right for the city of Scranton and I applaud you on that bill for uh, you know recognizing where we all got to be we're all one group here and uh, I know our president's got a big smile on his face, so. But uh, we do need to work to get the parking authority over there, tell us where those 500 spaces are, let Basilica tell us. I think we should call him in, bring him before everybody, and let him tell us where the 500 spaces for the city of Scranton employees are, or give us the four and a half million dollars back, and also give us the money back on the electric city when he did that too. And if he can't tell us, Hey, too bad. He's got deep pockets. He's buying everything else up. So let him take care of uh, his obligation to the 500 spaces. I think you agree with me on that. So let's move on that. And I'm sure the other councilmen here would be more than glad to join you in this endeavor and uh, bring him in here and let's ask the question. We got the FBI out there. If he can't answer them, we could ask them to get an answer. So let's do it on our own terms. The other part of it is, uh, I think we need to ask the Nayog Park Authority to uh, dissolve itself. 
Okay, uh, I filed for an injunction that's active now. It stopped the uh, deal between Guy Singer, the Nag Park Authority, to give over 200 parking spaces for a dollar something a day for 200 spaces, which is asinine. They want to take $100,000, put in offices for who, for what, and they all. The money needs to come here in the city, so we change it. It's the price of a Big Mac at night to park for 24 hours in 200 spaces. So their whole deal is that they, the PPNL will come and put all the lights in you want and send you a bill at the end of the month. So we don't need that. We could take the other piece of property, either make a deal to buy it from Guy Singer or take it on him at the main and let the court decide the value. So we don't need to be bullied by anyone. But we could take all that tax dollar money that we'll generate there, which is over 385000 a year, and put that toward NAOG, Scranton, police, fire, and take care of our people, and also help deflate the incompetence of the Scranton School District in trying to reduce that tax on our citizens. So I think we should ask them to uh, get out of business because they don't, really don't know what they're doing anyway. So if we dissolve that authority. Uh, I think we need to buy the credit union building, take the minimum amount of money we need here to turn this into basically another museum for the city of Scranton. It's a hell of a deal. It's a modern building. It's got parking. It's got everything we need to go down there. And I don't think we should throw that away. Uh, this past week, uh, you know, I don't want to see an interim person come in here, work for six months, who is basically going to be a glorified bookkeeper. I think if we're going to do this, I think we should just forget about appointing another mayor and either turn over the duties of finance or bookkeeping and everything, what she's got to do, to either the controller or to Wayne Beck in the treasurer's department and not worry about it, have the election, and when the mayor does get elected, and it shouldn't be from out of the area, he should be from Scranton or she should be from Scranton, whatever it is, because we know our city. We don't need people coming here telling us what we should do and not do. And we have honest, credible people in this city that could turn the city around. We have a black veil over us. It's unfortunate what happened to Bill, but we got to move forward. And that's where we are. And you guys took the helm yesterday. So let's move forward. But I don't think putting somebody interim here to make decisions on what we're going to do. And then somebody new comes in in an election. Excuse me. It's reelected and un does whatever the other person did. So maybe you want to look around that thing there and then somebody in from because I can't see anybody coming in that's going to really want to be here, qualified and competent that wants to sit around here for six months and then throw everything away. You know, we don't need to go backwards. We got to look to the future and go forward. And just quickly, uh, this past Saturday, we had the Trump 2020 tour at the Radisson. That was a hell of a success. We had a lot of people show up. Thank you, Mr. Thank you. Marge Kravitz. Marge Kravitz, taxpayer. I came here to talk to Mr. Perry about that um, drain on Ferdinand and Church. So, Mr. Gahan, could you give me the answer? Well, you just asked me yesterday when you were yeah. at the meeting back there, so I haven't gotten around yet. Okay. It's on my um, list, but hold on one second. Okay. Um, you told me yesterday that they had marked the street, correct? The so water, the gas, right. and um, so that the would tell the pipe. Right. So that would tell me that they're going to eventually work on it. I will have Mrs. Reed check with uh, all three of those utilities to see give us a timeline, but I'm assuming it will be in the next month or two. Okay, and then I want to tell you too about Mr. Gallagher. Um, he did say he was going to do it, and then we went to the DPW and he wouldn't even talk to us. We talked to um, Chris Jenkins, and he said that Mr. Gallagher will not do it. And I had the letter saying that he would do it. So I just want to know, what kind of people do you have working for the city of Scranton? 
that they don't want to do their job. I mean, it needs to be done. This is a big, huge problem, as you know. In the winter, she can't get out of her back, back porch because the water comes up to her back porch and it's all ice. And it has to be done, like it has to be done before the winter. That's all I want. Okay, and um, I hope you elect a mayor that will do our city justice, not like Courtright. Thank you. And Thank I you. hope none of you are involved in Courtright's either, corruptions. Okay? Thank you. Thank you. Is there anyone else who would like to address council? Uh, Marie Schumacher, uh, I will start today with a huge thank you to God for keeping me and others who could have been in my pathway but weren't uh, safe when I was forced to use my emergency brake last week, and I'm very thankful. Uh, next, I would like to thank DPW for filling some nasty potholes within a couple of days of a call. So that is appreciated, and my vehicles appreciate it too. Uh, last week you passed 7A authorizing loading zones on downtown streets. What I couldn't find is what will the fine be if these uh, trucks continue to double park to unload? Uh, if you could answer that in fifth order, I would really appreciate knowing because that creates havoc. Uh, well, I'm happy that we citizens will be able to uh, vote for our next mayor. I have a concern based on recent, that would be since my return to Scranton, real world facts. Appointees have promised not to run for their seat, but change their mind and return to council. Mr. Evans and Mr. McGough are both examples. Um, is there any legal way to ensure the person you appoint keeps their word? Uh, would it be possible to ask them to sign a pledge that they will resign if they are elected by either their party, uh, put forth for their party, or uh, just people voting? I, guess, I don't think you can do that. I, that would be taking away but votes, but um, there has to be something stronger than, yeah, I won't do that. And then moving, moving to ongoing issues. As I have referenced periodically, I keep a log of property transactions. The log calculates the actual ratio of assessment to purchase price. Recently, I started to get excited, just very excited, because it appeared that we were having more properties that were going over this uh, common level ratio than under it. Because when you're under, you're paying taxes that you shouldn't have to be paying. Uh, then came July 2nd, and I went, and that got the pail of cold water. I went to the state website and found that the state's common level ratio for 29 had changed for our county from last year's 6.54 to 9.43. Clear and simple, our property values are in a downward slope. The log of Scranton Properties transactions from July 3rd through yesterday, there were 23 uh, property transactions of 80 countywide. Of these 23 transactions, all but three, all but three, have a ratio below the state common level ratio. That means 20 property owners were overpaying based on inaccurate assessments. This is a problem both you and the school board need to address. East Mountain is a victim of two properties, just as an example, that went on the market last year at basically the same asking prices. Dropped their, one dropped their price 20% already and the other one 15% and both are still on the market. There's a house up there that's, I think, been on the sixth year with a for sale sign out. Uh, and downtown doesn't seem to really be faring much better. Um, one of the units of a, that 500 Renaissance venture had the highest selling price back in 2016, 
and the other and one other of them is still held by the Lackawanna De or the 500 development company so they're not exactly hot properties uh, time uh, <clears throat> what is the time of day switching to on the 15th for the PEL visit is that going to be day night Okay, at fifth order, maybe you can address that. And then if Mr. Foley is watching from Music Lake where he's probably having lunch with his wife instead of dinner after here, uh, I would really like for him to return and let us know what he's found out regarding elections. And then finally, if anybody knows, how do taxpayers find out when a property goes from taxable to tax exempt? Could we ask the assessor to advise us if it's within the city limits? Thank you. Thank you. Is there anyone else who would like to address council? Um, my name is Jay Walsh. I'm a resident of the city of Scranton, and I'd like to give you my resume for if, the mayor. If you want to give it to, to the city clerk, um, you're more than welcome to. Is there anyone else who'd like to address council? Good afternoon, council. Dave Dobson, resident, taxpayer, taxes pay. Uh, all right, Ms. Joan uh, covered the basis on an interim mayor. Uh, however, one other thing. Uh, I would like to encourage people to do a one-party run, not a two-party run, where we're locked into one person irregardless. Uh, that would be very helpful. Uh, I've seen some good candidates uh, get nixed, basically, because there was a lack of interest and uh, it's not right. So hopefully we can find ourselves a nice Eisenhower Republican uh, we might want to vote for and uh, maybe a Kennedy Democrat, I don't know. Um, uncollected taxes and fees. I wonder with all of this involved if uh, it has anything to do with our massive uncollected trash fees and our massive uncollected taxes. Uh, basically, when the cat goes away, the mice will play. It's out of their mind, you know. Uh, uh, they're not reminded that they even owe the money. And, of course, they kind of hope that it will go away forever. And, Maybe uh, when the bill finally comes due, they'll be up in heaven or wherever, you know, or sell the house and duck the whole deal. So uh, we really need to look into this. And they were involved with kickbacks. So uh, shame, shame, shame. Uh, the best thing anybody could do if they're approached for a kickback is uh, agree to it and then call the FBI for your package of mark bills. <laughs> That'll take care of them. Um, the recess up and coming. I think with the conditions, if somebody has a deposit on a house at a beach house or something like that, you know, we could consider that. But I think it, in, in view of the fact it might be uh, prudent to suspend the recess and also transfer the rest of the meetings to evening um, where concerned people can attend and they don't have to take off a day of work. I'm luckily retired, but there and again. Uh, and uh, on a city hall renovation, I think it's time that we apply for the $5 million 
for a historical grant. We have everybody and their brother on tax exempt status in this town. Some are uh, religious or organizations and some are uh, other government, even government offices, uh, and it's been expanding. Um, so it's really time we get on it and start to move forward. Uh, and there's some things that are not being done. I read an article in the paper about uh, uh, utility repairs. And uh, we have two recently paved streets, uh, the 800 of Crown, last year at least, probably by last spring, there's a huge divot in the street that somebody dug and, and it's sinking in. Uh, the 300 of Cedar, it looks like a map of New Jersey. You know, it's, it's, uh, it's just, we have to move forward and we all also have to uh, make sure that these, uh, these issues are, are dealt with uh, as we go along because when the cat's away, the mice will play. Uh, and furthermore, with the uh, executive, we really need to review the Home Rule Charter and two terms, we need to change that two terms only for a mayor. It's bad enough with uh, the second term, let alone a third and a fourth and what have you. It's, it's not, uh, not a good situation and it gets to be a lifetime job. The only downside is a young guy won't take the job or run for mayor because uh, he's walking you, away Dobson. from a career. Thank you, have a good day. Is there anyone else who'd like to address council? <clears throat> Mr. Donahue, any motions or comments? Uh, yeah, just briefly, I would like to say that I entirely agree with Joan Hodawan's assessment of Dable Zoni and, that, and the residency requirement. I voted against waiving the residency requirement because it was written in our charter or in our administrative <coughs> code that, we, that you are required to live in the city. But I agree that should be looked at because talent needs to be what we're looking for going forward and so I would just like to say I would agree with that and also on Marie's point about uh, Pell we are going we are looking to reschedule our caucus our public caucus with Pell before our summer recess we haven't I don't believe we've heard back from them yet Laurie have we on reschedule we're, we're still working to okay so we're, we're trying to reschedule that for before recess to get an update on the exit plan. So it's on the 15th, a date hasn't been set. A date hasn't been set yet. Um, and then just, I'll be passing along some uh, requests I got regarding updates on the renovation at Crawley Park, and I will save the rest of my comments for agenda items. Thank you, Mr. Evans. Any motions or comments? A few comments. Uh, first of all, uh, on the City Hall renovations, I've had some conversations and I've asked Mr. Bozzoni to begin to look at the options that we might have to uh, see what can be done to finance the restoration of City Hall. Also, we talked a little bit about uh, doing a space plan prior to that so we can incorporate that space plan into the ultimate plan because I think that's important after seeing how some of the employees are working within City Hall. It, it really is a horrendous conditions. Um, as Marie stated, effective July 1st, 2019, the new common level ratio for Lackawanna County is 9.43. Last year it was 6.54. It hasn't been above 7.09 since 1986. So currently we have the third highest common level ratio of any county in the state of Pennsylvania. Now why is that significant? Well, the common level ratio is the ratio that measures how a county's base year assessment compares with the real estate market values. This number is established by the State Tax Equalization Board, or STEB, to calculate a revised assessed value based on established real estate, real estate sales from the prior year. For example, if you presently have an assessed valuation of 20,000, if you multiply that by the 9.43 CLR, your market value or revised assessed value is 188,600. So theoretically, this could be the considered the market value, but as we know, based on Marie's comments, that's not necessarily true. What it really points to is the inherent unfairness to our current county assessments. 
and the higher the common level ratio is, it's more of an ind indication how skewed our current assessments really are. So being number three in the state is something we should not be proud of, and it's another reason among the myriad of valid reasons for a countywide reassessment. On Monday, I attended a meeting at the PennDOT offices in Dunmore with Councilman Donahue. The, uh, we met with the acting head of the district office, Rich Roman, and his staff. The purpose of our meeting was twofold. One was to revisit the problems at the intersection of Pittston Avenue and Orchard Street. So PennDOT agreed to look at it again and come up with some additional suggestions <coughs> over the next few weeks that could create a safer environment, especially for pedestrians. That's a big concern of ours. So we're hopeful that something positive could finally come out of that. But secondly, we met to create a better relationship with PennDOT ahead of the connectivity walkability study that's going to be done for the downtown. There are quite a few streets downtown that are currently listed as state roads. And to develop a dialogue early in the process will go a long way towards working together once the study is finally underway. So we all know PennDOT is the vast keeper of regulations. So it's important that they know our concerns and issues right up front before implementation takes place and the study begins. So we also discussed the possibility of turnbacks. Now turnbacks are when state roads can be turned back to the city in certain cases that make sense. And what happens is PennDOT in perpetuity will pay the city some maintenance costs for taking that street back. Also there's uh, the idea of swap program, which is swapping out certain city streets for state streets when that makes sense. And I think it's important to have that conversation as well with PennDOT. And finally, with PennDOT, there's a winter maintenance agreement where PennDOT would pay the city to plow certain state roads. And that may make sense for both parties because there's currently times when either the state or city plow trucks are lifting their plows for a few blocks and then putting them back down because they're passing through someone else's roads. In fact, in Philadelphia County alone, PennDOT pays them $4.5 million a year to the city of Philadelphia to plow for the city to plow state roads within city limits. So we've talked a lot about that, and I'd like to see, you know, thank Mr. Roman again and his staff for agreeing to meet with us and allowing us to create a dialogue and a conversation. Uh, and I think it's going to be very, very important as we move forward, and it was encouraging nonetheless. Uh, and everybody knows I'm a, uh, very much a critic of PennDOT, so uh, it was very helpful for me. At yesterday's meeting, we met to establish our path to appointing an interim mayor for the rest of this year as well as having a special election for a new mayor in November. And then that person would begin serving the first Monday of January 2020. So all I can tell you is we'll do our very best to have a professional, open, and transparent process. And as I've stated before, we'll continue to do our best to do our best for the city. You know, there's a saying that I've used over the years, and I think everybody has probably heard this, if you're not part of the solution, you're part of the problem. I'm asking everyone that's part of this government, as well as our citizens and business community, to do your part to be part of the solution. So maybe together, if that happens, we can all begin to heal a little bit from the deep wounds that have been inflicted on us. And then maybe we can start seeing the other side and begin to thrive again. And finally, my weekly reminder that I've said for months and months that these council meetings may be more relevant than ever. Every day is your chance to make this city a little better. And that's all I have for tonight. Thank you, Mr. Gaughan. Any motions or comments? Uh, yes, I, I think everybody at this point um, feels like we're in a state of, of uh, purgatory. Um, I, I've run into a lot of people over the last few days who have asked, you know, what exactly is going to happen over the next six months, what's going to happen over the next uh, two to two and a half years, and even further down the road than that. Um, I have a few suggestions. The first is the uh, ethics board. Um, I sent a letter on June 25th, or this council sent a letter on June 25th to the city solicitor asking that legislation be drafted to officially appoint uh, the four members to the Board of Ethics. We'll have to wait for the fifth person to be appointed by whoever the next uh, mayor is. But we do have four members, so those four people uh, will provide a quorum, they can have a meeting, and I do think uh, we need to get started as soon as possible on that. I think that's important to start to restore confidence and credibility in, uh, in the city government. Because if you remember, the ethics board had been dormant uh, for a number of years. And I, I think some of the things that we put in the new ethics code are important. I think part of that process is education. 
of city employees, of city officials. Uh, I look to what the school board did where uh, elected officials are required to take a course in uh, finance or something to that effect. I think we need to look at doing things like that. Um, the second thing that, that I would recommend and that they're, they're already doing uh, is an assessment of the licensing and inspections department. I think that's really important. Again, to restore credibility uh, to city government. Um, I, I think every department in this building needs to be reevaluated. Everything. At this point, I know that there's a lot of negativity and I understand that because of what happened and what happened was horrible. But as I said two weeks ago, we now have an incredible opportunity. We have an incredible opportunity to turn things around and do things the right way. And I think that starts with re evaluating every department, evaluating every process that goes on inside City Hall. One of the things I would recommend and I have been recommending for the last few years is communication. There is, there has been a total lack of communication between City Council and the Mayor's Office and the Administration, and there's been a real lack of communication between our government and our residents. We have provided several uh, ideas on that front. One program would be see, click, fix, where you would start to actually <coughs> log and record citizens' requests and problems that occur throughout the city. That's just one way to start to change the narrative here where people call City Hall and can't get an answer. Um, I do think that we need to come up with a communications plan over the next two and a half years or however long it would take. Um, again, I think communication is key and I don't think that um, we have done a good job. The city has done a good job on that. Um, second, the third thing would be our website. I think this is an incredible opportunity to change the way that we uh, put information online. Council started to do this a few years ago with putting everything that you see uh, on the agenda online, where in the past you would have to come down and physically get a copy. I think all financial information, anything that is public that we can put on the website, we should put on the website so that you do not have to make a, a, a right to know request uh, or anything like that. I also think we need to evaluate, uh, reevaluate uh, the, the way we operate down at DPW and our parks department. I think we can do uh, some things more efficiently there. Um, but again, every function at this point of city government needs to be under a microscope, needs to be reevaluated, and needs to be put on the table. Um, I had a conversation to that effect with uh, the business administrator, Mr. B Mr. Bolzoni, this morning, and uh, he agreed. I also think whoever the next mayor is needs to establish a monthly meeting schedule with the neighborhood leaders. Again, for all the negative things I've heard over the last week, one of the, the things that we have going for us in the city is that we do have very strong neighborhoods. And for the most part, we have very strong neighborhood leaders and very strong neighborhood groups. So I think whoever the next mayor is over the next six months or two and a half years, they need to reestablish a very close relationship with the neighborhood leaders and meet with them at least once a month. I know that in the past few years there has been a neighborhood summit uh, between the police department and the neighborhood leaders. I think we need to reestablish that and uh, the mayor needs to take a, a major part in that. Um, you know, just listening again to, to some of the people that, that I've talked to over the last few days, um, I do think we have to remain positive here. You know, my family, just like a lot of families in this city, have been in Scranton and in, the, in this valley since the 1800s. Um, I don't think it's time to give up. I don't think it's time to uh, shut the lights off. I don't think that we have any place other to go than up at this point. I mean, if there is a rock bottom, I think we're either we hit it or we're pretty close. But um, I think that all of us need to step up to the plate at this point and, and, and really reevaluate where we are and come up with a plan uh, to continue to move forward. So that's uh, what I have to say on that whole situation. Um, Mrs. Reed, if we could find out from Mr. Gallagher and our city engineer an update on the uh, paving program. I've, I've gotten several requests from people who are curious as to when that exactly is going to take place. I know we recently voted on the um, uh, legislation for the engineering contract. I just want to know when that the uh, actual paving program is going to take place. Um, I mentioned this a few weeks ago. Mrs. Jeffries, who's not here today, usually gets up and asks about the uh, the sign program. We we had a uh, company come in, and they were taking a look at all of the street signs, stop signs, any other signs throughout the city, 
And uh, when I talked to Mrs. Jeffries, I incorrectly stated a few weeks ago that um, their assessment was, was complete. I was under that impression, but I was actually wrong. Um, we received an email uh, from Mr. Bolzoni. The company has completed seven nights and have three more to go to finish the retro reflectivity portion of it to see if this, how uh, signs are viewed at night, which is a major problem. Um, they sent in a report to show that the signs that they've rated so far have been very poor. Um, there's many speed limit signs, street name signs, and uh, stop signs that are, are, you can't see at night. Um, they're going to set up training for the first or second week in August, and then eventually we should start to see some movement. I, I think the plan is to uh, replace these signs uh, section by section of the city. So I thank Mr. Bozzoni for that update. Um, another update that we haven't talked about in quite some time is the kiosk project that was uh, kind of butted up against the street light project, uh, replacing all the street lights in the city with LED. Um, this was held up, according to uh, Mr. Bolzoni, because of PennDOT approval. Um, so he finally received banner information regarding the, the digital media project with the kiosks throughout the city, and they will now approach PennDOT for approval. So we should start to see movement um, on that. Uh, also, we received a uh, liquid fuels tax fund audit for the period January 1st, 2016 to December 31st, 2017. And I would ask that this be put in third order uh, for next week. Um, in reviewing this document, there was one finding of a non-permissible expenditure, and that was that uh, the city expended $22,550 during uh, 2016 from the liquid fuels tax for decorative street lighting in the park, which was a non-permissible expenditure. Um, they also, in a previous report, recommended that the city file all required documents and information timely to receive its allocation during the first week in April. And during this current examination, uh, they noted that the city had complied with their recommendation. Sorry. Also, on the uh, Linden Street uh, Pocket Park remediation, we did receive an update from Mr. Bolzoni, um, although not a good one, the $50,000 LSA grant uh, that the city was going for was not approved, so we are now on the hook for $55,000 in direct funding. Uh, he reported that that amount would likely be a component in the 2020 budget, or they can revisit the LSA grant um, again. The Keystone grant was approved in the amount of $62,500, and just a reminder that Scranton tomorrow at this point has a $400,000 grant for those improvements. Um, I mentioned a few weeks ago some good news. The pharmacy benefit manager that the city had uh, um, entered a, into a contract with, we have seen significant savings on that end. Uh, we received another note from the HR director that we have $416,000 worth of savings for the nine month period from July 1st, 2018 to March 31st, 2019. And in the first quarter of this year alone, we've already saved $137,000. So. Uh, that actually has turned out to be a very good decision by the administration and by this council. Uh, Mrs. Reed, uh, Mrs. Krowitz got up and talked about the Ferdinand Street uh, flooding issues. If you could just check with, uh, maybe start with Jeremy Hull and, and see if they have a timeline on when that is going to be taken care of, I would appreciate it. Um, also received <coughs> quite a few citizens' requests. I'll just quickly run through them. Um, Division Street between Kaiser Ave and Dale Ave is getting very narrow. On each side there's a drainage ditch that is between two to three feet deep. The edge of the road is deteriorating, uh, being slowly washed away by every rainfall. I actually had a chance to uh, take a ride up in that area and um, it is very dangerous. So we did forward that to the appropriate department and hopefully they will take a look at that. Also the 300 block of Ferdinand Street uh, received some quality of life issues, so we did forward that again to the um, licensing and inspections department. 824 Pitson Avenue, um, this has been a problem property now for the last few years, and a tree had fallen down over into uh, a woman's yard, so we did send that into licensing and inspection, so hopefully that gets taken care of. Um, let's see, what else do I have here? Oh, the last thing I have is when we're talking about uh, the renovation of City Hall, 
We received um, in our mailboxes July 9th the following petition from City Hall employees. Um, I just want to read it, it's only a paragraph. It says, we the employees of City Hall are requesting our building be secured during working hours. Due to the recent event at City Hall, we feel as though our safety is of the utmost importance and we should be able to come to work, do our jobs knowing we are safe. We are requesting measures be put in place at all entrances to ensure people who may wish to do us harm are kept out. And there are several uh, City Hall employees <coughs> here in their department uh, and they've signed this petition. Um, I had a conversation this morning with Mr. Bolzoni about this petition and I do think that the employees who work in this building are correct in their assessment. Um, there was actually a threat assessment completed of City Hall by the Scranton Police Department and I have it in front of me here. Um, there are several issues that are delineated in this report uh, with security issues with this building. So I don't know if, I, I want to double check to see if this can be made public because it says that um, the document must be kept secure at all times and then some other things in here are privacy statements so I want to triple check with the police department uh, to make sure that um, if that can be made public uh, uh, before that would be done. But I talked to Mr. Bolzoni this, uh, this morning and as part of the overall improvement, the improvements of this building, security would be uh, number one on their list. Um, I think he had a conversation with the IT director this morning about possibly putting security cameras in the front of the building and I'm sure there are some other things that they're going to do uh, but I just wanted to let the City Hall employees know that we are we are taking that uh, those complaints very seriously and that's all I have this week thank you thank you uh, just very briefly I know most of you that are here were here at our meeting yesterday and I did mention at the beginning just to recap um, regarding applications for for the vacancy um, we will be taking those until exactly one week today July 17th at noon um, after that point council will likely have a special meeting to discuss and have an appointment um, it may take place at a regularly scheduled meeting if um, the schedule coincides but I know all of our goal is to do this process as quickly and openly as possible um, so I do want to thank um, all my colleagues and all of our staff as well because I know this has been um, a lot of work, especially on our solicitors, our clerks, um, all of our assistants. So everyone really has come together during this, uh, during this difficult time for the city. And we are continuing to do our business as well, um, council. Um, we did table a couple of items last week when this first, when everything transpired. One of those items is coming back for a final vote this week. We're working on rescheduling our caucus with Pell um, before the end of the month. There's also a couple other items of outstanding legislation that we're working on getting wrapped up um, over the next couple of weeks as well. So although much of our efforts are going to be focused on this process of selecting a mayor for, the, for this appointment, our day-to-day -day business is still continuing. So we're going to con still continue to push forward with, with all these different initiatives that are in front of us. And uh, most importantly, in my opinion, is uh, the, the caucus with Pell, because Scranton is right on the brink of getting out of distress status. Um, despite everything that's happened, um, that has not changed. Um, we're going to continue to work with the Pennsylvania Economy League and our, our uh, business administrator to keep things moving forward on behalf of the residents. That's all. 5B, no business at this time. Sixth order, 6A, no business at this time. Seventh order, 7A, previously tabled for consideration by the Committee on Rules for Adoption, Resolution Number 127, 2019. Authorizing the mayor and other appropriate city officials to execute and enter into a settlement agreement by and between UGI Utilities Incorporated, the City of Scranton, and Pennsylvania Public Utility Commission to settle litigation filed against the city and PUC by UGI. As chairperson for the Committee on Rules, I recommend final passage of item 7A. Second. On the question. Uh, yes, on the question. Um, I'm going to be voting against this resolution tonight just because I think it's a bad deal for the taxpayers of the city and it will negatively impact the quality, further negatively impact the quality of roads throughout the city. And I think this is just one more example of the natural gas industry just thumbing their nose at residents and that's why I will be voting no. Um, yes, on the question, uh, I, I will be voting yes for this and I'll, I'll just be very blunt on uh, why? Um, 
we had an executive session tonight with the uh, assistant city solicitor Joe Price, and you know the crux of the whole conversation is that we don't have a leg. The city does not have a leg to stand on. We already lost part of the lawsuit. UGI took us right to Commonwealth Court. Um, the permit fees have to be commensurate with the costs associated with the fees. They were not. We lost that part of it. Um, we lost, or excuse me, we lost uh, part of the lawsuit where we wanted the uh, utility company to get permits to work on PennDOT roads. Um, if we all voted against this and it went back, we would probably lose and it would be even worse. So is this a great situation? No, but I honestly don't think we have any other choice. Um, Mr. Price also uh, brought up the fact that UGI is currently involved in lawsuits with Redding and, and Lancaster for the same type of reasons. I don't know if they've been successful against those two uh, municipalities, but at this point, um, you know, I, we, I don't think we have a choice. We really do not have uh, a leg to stand on legally. So uh, rather than put the city in more uh, legal harm and, and uh, potential cost, uh, I'll be voting for this to settle the lawsuit. Thank you. I would agree with, with those comments, and, and it's one of those situations where I don't think anyone, any one of us is happy about um, the settlement agreement, but it is the, the best that could have been done under the circumstances based on the laws in the state. Um, obviously, as Mr. Gaughan mentioned, if we do vote this legislation down, it will continue through the courts and the city is likely to lose, um, which would call, wind up costing us more money in the long run. So unfortunately, it is um, you know it is the situation that's that's before us, but it is the best decision um, for for the taxpayers long term. Uh, on the question, previously we tried to take the path of more stringent guidelines, and this is where it got us. But the reality was we were trying to fix a problem. Everybody knows how difficult it is to get around the city and how the paved cuts affect uh, the roads. Uh, but what this will also do is put us in, in direct. Uh, syncing up with PennDOT and their guidelines. So there'll be some consistency there between state roads and city roads. I think there's a benefit to that. Um, so it is what it is, and we're going to have to move on from this. I just want to add one more point. Again, I think this is an opportunity to reevaluate the Pave Cut Inspector's office. There's only one Pave Cut Inspector for 26 or I don't know how many square miles we have in the city, which is in and of itself ridiculous. Um, I. Again, we talked to Mr. Bolzoni about that. Whoever the next mayor is really has to evaluate the way that we're doing this. I've had reservations about it since I got on council because it's I don't you know think we're really doing it in uh, the most efficient manner. Having one employee to cover all that ground um, doesn't make much sense to me. So I think as part of this, you will see uh, possibly a reevaluation of how we do that. Thank you. And I agree with Mr. Gaughan on that on that point about. The number of people we have in the pave cut and that's why i believe we could make there's administrative decisions and legislative quick legislative changes we can make to be to get us to a point where we stand on firmer legal ground and i think that should be the way we should go about it anyone else roll call please mr. W. no mr evans yes mr gone yes mr rogan yes i hereby declare item 7a legally and lawfully adopted if there's no further business, I'll entertain a motion to adjourn. Motion to adjourn. Meetings adjourned.